Legislation by Senator Tony Atta will close a loophole in the government of Guam employment system that allows drug users to escape random drug testing. Bill number 123-36, if passed, will prohibit GovGuam from rehiring workers who previously resigned to avoid drug tests. Currently, a merit-based employee may resign from GovGuam and have the right of re-entry at the same or similar position at the last salary earned. An employee who fails a drug test and is terminated loses those reemployment rights. To game the system, employees have resigned on the spot when told to test for drugs, then are rehired within days or months of the resignation. Bill 123-36 will require employees to submit to drug testing if they wish to retain reemployment rights if they resigned after the announcement of a drug test. This bill is designed so that an individual has more of a chance to get the help they need rather than take advantage of their position and put themselves or others at risk in the process. The Guam legislature held a public hearing two weeks ago regarding the legislation. Quote, we have a responsibility on how we move the government forward in accountability and transparency, and most especially the safety of our government. End quote. Senator Tello Taidegui said. Senator Brown, the former director of Department of Public Works, said she has encountered bus drivers testing positive for methamphetamines and other illegal drugs. This is most concerning, she said, because they are tasked with the responsibility of driving children to and from their respective schools. On the other hand, according to Ms. Brown, she has witnessed a common practice among government of Guam agencies, including law enforcement, when drug testing is announced, some employees resign that same day. Mr. Ada hopes to close the loophole and get employees the help they need rather than continuing to take advantage of the system. Although they cannot prevent an employee from being tipped off prior to the drug testing, it is a start in the right direction. When an announcement for drug testing has been made, employees do have the chance to admit that they have a problem, according to the Senator. Bill 123-36, right? right. Uh, would prohibit GovGuam from rehiring workers who resign to avoid drug tests. Mm -hmm. Are there any recent events or anything that brought about this urgency to introduce this bill? Well, you know, this bill, right, as you know, over the years, right, people have, um, have um, resigned, you know, they got employed and they know a drug test is coming up and then they re resigned. So the, the uh, impetus for this bill was actually to try and close that loophole so that, you know, if, if, there's, a, if there's an issue or if there's a, a, an individual has a, a drug problem, you know, take advantage of the safe harbor, right? For those people that can, you know, rather than wait until, you know, uh, a drug testing comes up. And then when they have the, um, then when that time comes up and they can't, you know, they have no other option, but to resign, you know, that's not the route we want them to take. We want them to make sure they get the help they need because that's what's important, right? We know that it's an issue and we know that how can we help them address their issue, but at the same token, not taking advantage of a system that was not meant to be taken advantage of. Has this uh, impacted you or anyone that you know personally? Uh, no, it hasn't. You know, uh, I think that when when we look at when we look at Gov Guam as a whole, right, and we want to make sure that we have the the people that are able to do the job, and to do the job without any fear of you know what's going to happen or if they get caught and things like that. We want to make sure, like I said, that they take advantage of the system to get the help they need rather than, you know, uh, not not doing what they need to do and taking the route of resigning and then trying to come back in. Right. So just so like sneaking around. Yeah. And, you know, we don't want that. Right. I mean, it, it may perhaps it may not be sneaking around. Perhaps it may just be they don't recognize that they have an issue. And I think that we need to we need to make sure that, you know, and perhaps maybe agencies need to do it is to put it out there more often that especially now during this COVID time, right, people turn to different means of uh, relaxation or, you know, stress relievers or whatever it may be. So maybe our, our departments and agencies need to put it out there more often that if you need assistance, you know, call Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center or seek help, right? rather than to let it linger on and not take care of the issue. There is a program in place, right? It's funded, collect, 
for if they were to say they, I have a problem. Yeah, they have the safe haven where you can go, right? And take advantage of that and say, hey, you know what? This is what, you know, I have a, I have a drug problem. You know, you, you, they, they notify their supervisor and they can get them the help that they need. And I so prefer the government that would route. Allow to, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that's, that's the route I prefer them to take, right? And mm -hmm. to put themselves or their families in jeopardy and, yeah. you know, not getting the treatment. Has the current system allowed for corruption where employees who exploit the loophole are brought back because they are connected? You know, I think whether uh, an individual is connected or not doesn't have a, doesn't have any standing or bearing on it. I think an individual who knows how to work the system will just work the system, right? And uh, I think what would happen is that when they see or realize that they're in trouble, I mean, they're going to take advantage of that reemployment rights that they currently have as government employees. So, you know, that's what we got to... That's what we got to do is just make sure that the bottom line is we want to make sure people get the help they need. Because what I gathered from the bill, right, that you authored is that it will require government employees to submit to drug testing before resignation. Also, if they resign after the announcement of any drug testing, they would give up their employment rights specifically to be able to be hired again at a salary no less than what they earned at their former position if they applied for the same or comparable job at the same department. But what if they got tipped off and resigned prior to announcement, like Senator Brown points out, happens all too often. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that that's the thing, right? We can't we can't penalize uh, an individual because they resigned prior to an announcement being made. Right. But once an announcement is made and that individual was randomly selected to take the, the drug test and they refuse and then they resign, then that's when it becomes effective. Right. Is that they now they now put themselves in that position where their reemployment rights now will be uh, taken away will be terminated because they resign after the not the, their knowledge of being selected for a random uh, a random drug test we can't uh, predict everything but we can at least try to do what we can to close those loopholes that we know exist uh, and those loopholes that exist are those that are randomly selected and they resign prior to taking the, the drug test. And have you had any feedback from the attorney general's office yet? No, not yet. And, you know, when we had the public hearing on the bill, uh, that was one of the concerns brought up by uh, the, uh, uh, the chair of the, the committee. So, you know, we're, we're working with our chairwoman and seeing how we can... Uh, move this bill forward, but at the same time, get the input of DOA and, and the Attorney General's office. We wanna make sure that when we do put it in place that it's it's covered by, all bases are covered. So you haven't heard from the Department of Administration yet either? Yeah, not yet. Okay. So when, when I'll follow up with the chairwoman and find out whether she's heard anything, because I haven't myself. And so is communication with them necessary for this bill to move forward or you're just being considerate? No, we're just being considerate. It's, it's not necessary. I mean, and if they do not put it because the bill was publicly heard and she did give 10 days for public for input. And if they don't hurt, um, if they don't have their input, then I'm going to continue to move forward with the bill to get uh, placed onto the session agenda. The on the spot resignation loophole applies to more than just drug offenders. Gov Guam classified employees lose reemployment rights if they are terminated for other offenses, such as conviction on felony charges. In 2015, the federal government indicted Guam Customs official Lieutenant Henry Alvandia in what became the largest police corruption conspiracy involving local law enforcement ever prosecuted on Guam. Mr. Alvandia, who faced 83 years in prison if convicted on the indictments, eventually pleaded to lesser charges in exchange for his cooperation with U.S. Homeland Security investigations in another case. He eventually was sentenced to only 18 months in prison. Mr. Alvin Diaz's superiors were aware of the crimes and his indictment, but did nothing to hold him accountable or to keep him away from his position of power at the island's ports of entry. He was allowed to resign and given reemployment rights. GovGuam never disclosed these facts publicly. They arose in 2018 in the criminal defense of Juanita Moser, who faced drug trafficking charges on the word and testimony of Mr. Alvin Diaz who had worked with HSI in 2017 to entrap Ms. Moser and her husband, Raymond Martinez. 
Ms. Moser's attorney, David Lujan, presented the jury with a letter signed by the Director of Customs at the time, giving Mr. Alvandia the right to be reemployed as a lieutenant with the Guam Customs Agency for four years following his resignation and begged the question, quote, who is corrupt here, my client or the government itself, for allowing Alvandia, after knowing everything he was doing, to stay in that position then resign from that position and have the right to go back to that position in exchange for his testimony." End quote. Two juries, both presented with the Alvandia file, twice could not reach a verdict in the Martinez-Moser trials. Candid verified with the Department of Administration, Human Resources Administrator, that Mr. Alvandia is not currently an employee within the executive agencies under the governor's control. We have not yet verified whether he has been employed elsewhere throughout the government of Guam or otherwise has been contracted. Mr. Ada's attempt to close the drug use loophole is well needed, but more must be done to close the other loopholes that allow politics and cronyism to decay the system.